Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth video of the house price prediction video series. So in the last video, that was our fourth video, we basically designed our home page, which is now looking like this. Let me start the server again. Just click on this URL. So our website is now looking like this. This is our home page. Once I click on the start button, the predict page is opened. And now in this video, we are basically going to design our predict page. So let's begin. Now let's uh, first of all, let's open this predict.html page from here. So here we are supposed to write the code for the front end. That is our predict page. So let's do it. So we will start by adding a background image to this page. So first of all, you have to put that image in this static folder. Now let me copy and paste it from my desktop. Okay, so my image is present here. Let me drag into this static folder. Okay. Okay, so now my image is ready. And now I can set it as my background image. So let's write code for that. So for that, we, I will be using an internal CSS again. Let me create a style tag. Body. And here we have to specify the relative path of the image. So just uh, right click on the image name and copy relative path and paste it here. And here we are supposed to remove this, this thing. Okay, so let's save this and refresh our web page. Okay, so here you can see that our image has been inserted. Now, since this image is not being displayed properly, it is a little bit zoomed in. So let's add some more CSS properties to visible the whole image perfectly. Let's do it. Okay, so let's refresh our web page again. Okay, so now it's looking perfectly fine. So now we can begin adding the important text in our body. So first of all, let's remove this thing because we don't need it anymore. And let's create the main div tag here. Class equals main. Inside this, let's create a heading h1 tag and uh, write, please enter the following values. Now, after that, we are going to create a form which will accept the values of the input variables. And then we will create a submit button. That is that means that when that submit button will be clicked, the result should be displayed. So now let's create a form action equals result so, uh, this basically means that when the submit button will be clicked then predict slash result page will be opened so let's create an another div tag here row inside this let's create an another div tag So here we are basically using Bootstrap to design our web page.
inside this let's create a paragraph tag and write average area income so this is basically the first input variable as per our data set and after that we will create input type is equal to text and let's name this as n1 okay so here we have created one input column that is for average area income so similarly let's create another two input columns for average area house age and average area number of rooms so for that we can copy and paste this div tag and paste it here two times and let's change the background color and let's change the name here it should be average area house age and here it should be average area number of rooms and let's name this thing as n2 and name this thing as n3 so let's save this so that's for our first row and we are still pending with two more input columns so we are going to write them in another row so for that just create an another div tag after closing the div tag with class is equal to row Now inside this we are going to do the same thing for two columns so let's paste this and change the background color to turquoise and let's change this as average area number of bedrooms and let's name it as n4 now let's copy this thing again and paste it here and first of all change the background color and change this text it should be average area population and change the name to n5 let's save this and after that we are going to create a submit button in an another row so just go here where this div tag is closed and create another div tag for uh, another row and let's create a submit button over here Uh, this value is basically the text which is going to be displayed on the button you can write any other alternate text as well let's close this input type and just go here where this form tag is closed and here we have to display the result so let's create another div for that So what is this result to variable this will be understood in the next video so for the time just write it like this so um, basically instead of this result to our calculated result will be displayed here so let's save this and see what's there on our web page okay so it is almost fine but since we have not included the bootstrap libraries so it's not being displayed in a proper manner so let's add those tags so just go here in the head tag and we'll um,
Okay, so after this, uh, we are supposed to add some code for the CSS. Now this CSS code will be available in the description. I will give you a Git, GitHub link. And from there, you can just copy and paste the CSS link. So let me copy and paste it here too. Okay, so it is almost done now. Let's save this thing and refresh our website and see what it look like. Okay, so it is almost fine. Just uh, this background image is not being displayed and our content is not aligned to center, which should be aligned. So let's make those changes here. For center alignment, we are going to use the inline CSS for the body tag. Let's save this and check our web page. Okay, so the alignment is now fine. Now let's check it for the background image. Okay, so actually the background image is also working fine. I just uh, by mistake wrote the wrong file name here, but it is working fine. So here you can see that our uh, web page is looking good. Okay, so we have successfully designed our predict page. So let's uh, test this. Let's write any random values in these columns and click on this predict button. So here we are getting an error that the current path predict slash result didn't match any of these. So for that, uh, we are supposed to do some changes in the urls.py file. So let's do it. Okay, so um, let me explain you what is the error actually. So whenever we are on the predict page, so this uh, predict.html page is being displayed as per uh, this, this path. That means when we are on the predict URL, then views.predict method will be called. And in uh, predict method, we have simply returned the predict.html page. Now, when we are clicking on this predict button, this, this predict slash uh, result URL is being accessed, but we have not created any path for this predict slash result URL. So that's what we are going to do here. Let's do it. Path predict slash result. And for that, let's um, call the result function. Let's save this. And since uh, there is no result function in the views.py file, so let's create it. Define result. And now when, when this URL is being accessed, what we want is we want to stay on the same page that is the predict.html page. And we want that our calculated result should be displayed there. So how this result is going to be displayed, this we are going to do in the next video. But for the time, what we can do is we can just simply return this predict.html page. That means that whenever the user is going to click on this predict but button, this page is going to get opened again. So let's uh, simply return predict.html page. Okay. So for the time, the result is not going to be calculated because we have not linked that code yet. But simply what's going to happen is when we click on this predict button, then we are going to stay on the same page. So I have clicked on this button and we are on the same page. So that's all for this video. We have successfully created our predict.html page. And in the next video, we are going to link our ML code that we wrote in the second video to um, this website. So, so what we are going to do is whenever this predict button is going to be clicked, we are going to write that ML code in this result function. Because whenever this predict button is going to be clicked, then um, this result function is going to get called. 
So we will just write that ML code inside this function and we will display the results on the predict.html page. So thanks a lot for watching this video. See you in the next video. And one last thing, in case you are getting any error, you can write it down in the comment section. I will definitely try to sort it out.